Hi, I'm Mike. One year ago, almost to the day, I stood on this very spot and made our first video we posted on YouTube. It was called Feeding the Cows. And a year later, the job is not any less important. From a distance, it may look like a mindless task. Another rancher spreading hay over a field. But in reality, it's a well thought out plan every single day, taking a little more brain power than you might imagine. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Our Wyoming Life, giving you a chance three times a week to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. A few short years ago, both my wife Erin and I worked in corporate radio. We came back to the ranch to help out family, and we never left. It's a life that we've grown to love, and one that we couldn't live without. We invite you to experience it with us as we share the surprises and the challenges and the rewards of ranching in Wyoming, and all you have to do is subscribe. Hit that little bell button so you don't miss a thing. A hundred years ago, cows were rarely fed in the winter. Most were left to scavenge on their own. Somewhere along the line, somebody figured out, and it's been a proven fact since then, that it's cost effective to feed cattle throughout the winter and increase their productivity in calving. In the summer, we cut and bale excess summer forage. We rake it together into windrows and we bale it, creating five foot rolls of hay, each weighing up to 1,500 pounds a piece, more than a cow herself. Then we stack it up and save it for feeding in the winter. As winter moves in, the nutritional value of the grass in the hay in the fields falls and eventually it's covered in snow and cows are unable to access it without expending more energy than it's worth. But how do you know when it's time to start feeding the cows? Even today, you can see them out foraging for grass, but the grass they're finding now is in no way fulfilling their nutritional requirements. If there's enough grass left over, they might last longer before needing to be fed but they're still gonna require protein supplements and once the grass is depleted or snow covered, well, then it's time to get to work. Normally, we begin feeding daily by the middle to the end of November. That daily feeding continues on until at least May, six long cold months of going out every morning and unrolling hay, checking waters and feeding supplements. So how do we know how much to feed? Well, each cow will eat roughly 2% of their body weight per day. Our cows average about 1,200 pounds, and they're going to eat 24 pounds of hay per day to maintain that weight. If she's pregnant, as all these cows are, she's going to need an extra 750 pounds of feed in the next three months to make up for the growth of her calf. So we're going to add on another 8 pounds of feed per day. So now we're up to 32 pounds. Over the winter, we'll feed almost 400 tons of hay. That's the weight equivalent of three blue whales, or about five loaded modern 737 jetliners worth of hay. Hay comes in a variety of qualities, from pasture grass to straight alfalfa, and depending on the type of the hay that we're feeding, we can determine if any type of supplement is required. All of our hay is tested in the fall. We take samples of the hay and we send it off to a laboratory where we're told what the protein level is and what the total net energy percentage of the grass or the hay is. Pasture grass can measure from 8% protein and 60% net energy and alfalfa grass or alfalfa hay may measure up to 20% protein and 80% net energy. Knowing what you're feeding will give you control over mixing types of hay and controlling the intake of our cows saving the good high quality protein hay until the end of pregnancy as the cows require mo more protein for milk production. For protein supplements, we feed a product called cake. It's also known as ranch cubes. And the main purpose is to add protein and other vitamins to the cow's diet. We regulate the amount of cake that they get to two pounds per cow and we feed it to the cows using the cake feeder that's mounted on the gator laying it out for them in a nice little row. They love it, and they come running. Cows also have access to mineral, and lick, and salt, and trace blocks, rounding out their diet and giving them the vitamins that they may require or may be lacking. 
Weather is also another huge factor when it comes to feeding our cows. In this part of Wyoming, the temperature can easily drop below zero for weeks in a row. The cows mostly live in the open, and although they do have shelter from the wind, they can't escape the temperatures, and for every 10 degrees below zero, a cow can require half again as much hay as she would normally eat, just to keep warm. Digestion creates heat, and without it, cows will begin using their fat reserves and eventually burning muscle to keep warm as the temperature drops. As we continue to feed the cows, another consideration is where to feed. On a cold, calm day, such as today, cows can be fed pretty much anywhere. But when the wind blows, you want to take that into account and feed on the backside of a hill or in a more protected area. If the ground is wet or muddy, you want to feed on the side of a hill where the ground may be harder and less likely to be torn up by the cow's hooves. The longer you continue to feed cows, the more evidence that they've been there will pile up, literally, in the form of manure. Each day, you want to give the animals a clean area to eat. But another added plus to spreading out your feed areas is the fact that you can spread manure around the fields as you move from feeding area to feeding area, fertilizing your pasture as you go and letting the cows do it for you. As spring gets closer, I hope, we will be moving into calving, increasing the cow's feed intake to compensate for advanced fetal growth. Calving season coincides with the appearance of new grass as well. And as the new grass begins to grow, we will feed the really good hay, the second and third cutting alfalfa to them, keeping them eating from us and let that new grass grow before they nip it off in its infancy. Feeding can be as complicated as you want to make it. Some operations, such as feedlots, have a highly calculated amount of feed that each cow gets, and it's weighed, and it's measured down to the pound. Obviously, we can't do that, but keeping our cows happy and well-fed, well, that's the beginning of a friendship that I have with them, and I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. Every one of these cows, they're my coworkers, and most days when I'm at work, it's just me and them, hanging out together, in close proximity, sometimes a little too close. And I guess if you've ever worked in a cubicle, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. There are cows I love, some cows I tolerate, and some, eh, just indifferent. But they all come running when it's time to eat. My father-in-law used to ask me every day if the cows said thank you for their food. Obviously, they never did. But I try to say thank you to them, not only to the cows, but to the land and to you. We're now heading into a whole nother year on the ranch. Calving is just around the corner and it's gonna be here before you know it. Aaron's getting going on gardens, planting seedlings and getting them in the ground. Everything here is a cycle, but each one is never the same. I'm sure that we have another great year in store. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Check us out on Facebook. We have things going on there that you can't find anywhere else, including some more giveaways coming up just for you guys. Please take the time to comment. We love reading them, and I know others do too. In addition, a new thing. If you have the time, I'd love for you to head over to our website, www.rwyomonglife.com, and sign up for the herd report. All we need is your email address, and every Monday, you'll receive the herd report, basically a newsletter about the previous week's videos, behind the scene footage, bloopers, a note from Aaron and myself. I don't know what all we're gonna throw in there, and it doesn't cost you a thing. It's just another great way that we get to hang out together. Tuesday, join me for another shot at the project list, and until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life.